All right, uh, Tony Khan announced today AEW has agreed to terms with one of the world's best wrestlers, a pro who is known and respected by virtually every AEW fan. They will come to L.A. to sign their contract this Saturday, November 18th, pay-per-view AEW Full Gear. Yeah. Did not specify male or female. Well. They will be there. What names have you heard? Have I heard is like actually the person? I have no idea. But I mean, everyone's. Oh, oh. I mean, I mean. The um, main rumored name that I've heard is Mercedes. Well, I mean. It, but I don't know. Okay, so, so um, yeah, I'm not going to say I know. It's because it's funny because I know two people who have told me who it is, and they have two different names. So, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know that anyone really knows. I mean, but uh, the situation is, is, I mean, there's three contenders that I could come up with, and one would be a disappointment, and the other two wouldn't be. And Mercedes, obviously. You know, I mean, if if he if Mercedes signs, I would say that that lives up to the, you know, to the billing, you know, because a lot of the a lot of people, whenever Tony makes these announcements, you know, and I, again, after the last one, it was like, ah, you know, it's like these these announcements, you know, you know, what I mean, it's like they're they're disappointing people. Um, so if he goes in here and if it's Dolph Ziggler, which I don't think it can be, um because I, I think that his non-compete isn't up yet. Um, but, um, you know, Mercedes is a free agent. It could be her, you know. And she was in London for the show. We pretty much know she was going to come in. He probably, it's probably a good time to make a big announcement. So, like, with her, it could be something where they could ma- could have made the announcement at any time. But why do it, you know, um if it's going to be months before she could come back and they, everyone's been very secretive about, you know, her injury and when she can come back and everything like that. So, um, I think that, that she's obviously one that would fit the bill and be, um, you know, be viable and, and nobody could knock him. Well, some people will, but you really can't knock him for that one. She's a big, big name. The other one, obviously, you know, that everyone's talked about is Will Ospreay. And Will is still under contract to New Japan until the end of January, which is even longer than Ziggler is non-compete. But the one thing with Will Ospreay is, is with New Japan and AEW being business partners, I think that, um, that you know, if they could make a deal, I don't, and, and it would involve him being able to still do big New Japan shows. I don't think New Japan would stand in the way of an announcement or anything like that, you know, knowing that he's not going to WWE, meaning that they could still work together. So um, that's another name. I mean, again, I don't know who it is, um, but those three are, are those three are names. Maybe it's somebody else, but, uh, you know, it could always be Bill Goldberg, too. But, um, you know, I mean, good. I don't know if that's the right guy right now. I even think Ziggler's not the right guy right now and, and also would be a disappointment if it was him. But um, Osprey, you know, I mean, Osprey certainly fits the bill as one of the world's best wrestlers, that's for sure, and would be very, very valuable. And the one thing is, is Tony does have, you know, WWE wants him, obviously, and, you know, he's been negotiating through, through uh, Barry Bloom, and the basic gist is that... Um, Tony does have the one thing that he can offer Will that that WWE doesn't have. Um, Money-wise, they, you know, I mean, the money could be, WWE can outbid him for money, I think. Um, Maybe not if if Tony really wants him. Um, But, you know, the one thing that AEW can do is they got Wembley and they got a world championship and there's a, easy natural great storyline there's a million ways to get to it um and wwe will not make that offer i don't think um they don't they're not going to do wembley this year well maybe they will but i don't think so um and more moreover i don't think that they could promise him a world championship um they could if they really wanted him bad they could and if you know but tony tony could do it much more easily you know, because WWE probably has its ducks in a row and would consider him more unproven. Whereas with AEW, um, I don't think that they would ever consider him unproven.
because of the success in Japan and WWE. It's like if you don't have the success here, it doesn't count as much. So that's why I'm saying that, that that's the one ace up Tony's sleeve when it comes to Will Ospreay, that where he could get him, um, you know, and also it's an easier schedule. Um, if But WWE could give him an easy schedule, too, if they wanted to. And, um, you know, they're going to be, um, you know, I mean, he's definitely going to be uh, one of the key, one of the big stories of the year is going to be, you know, where, you know, whether it's this year or early next year is where Will Ospreay shows up and where he signs and how long he signs. The uh, Globe Theater, I think we mentioned on Monday, was closing its doors forever after 110 years, and now it's not. No. We don't know why, but it's back open again, and uh, shows will yeah, continue running they're there. back. Um, yeah, yeah, there was there was negotiation issues um, um, with the lease and everything like that, and the people who were running it, I guess, for whatever reason... Uh, found something unfavorable and felt that it was not economically justifiable. And I guess after this happened and they, re- you know, were were shutting it down immediately, there were new negotiations and now it's open. So, um, you know, that's not a legendary wrestling venue, but it has been the home of PWG for five years. And um, other companies have started to go there, you know, um, uh, New Japan and Impact did a joint show in the in the Globe Theater not all that long ago. Prestige is doing a show there. Um, so, yep, not shut down. All right, uh, take us through these ratings. All right, um, let's see. Well, first of all, um, uh, SmackDown, uh, as far as the um, SmackDown, as far as the non sports. Uh, on the network, um, it was behind Crapopolis, 60 Minutes, Big Brother, the CMT Music Awards, CMT Awards from that were on Wednesday Night Survivor, and the Republican Convention. So, um, but beat everything else. I guess it doesn't, it's, it's kind of a lame duck show, actually. Well, it's not kind of, it is a lame duck show. It's being, it's going to be off Fox, um, you know, in, at the end of September. Uh, on cable, um, as far as the non-sports stuff went, uh, Raw first for the week, as it almost always is. Uh, AEW was, Dynamite was fourth, and NXT was fifth. You know, they were neck and neck last week in the ratings. Um, and uh, last night's NXT did uh, 703,000 viewers and 0.21 in the difference. You know, it's like, like everything. You know, I mean, people... Don't like me talking about the competition, but it's all ratings are about somewhat about what you're presenting and mostly about competition. I mean, NXT last week was first because there was not much competition um, on television for them. And they did, you know, actually, I think their most impressive rating ever. I mean, they've had. You know, the one with, with Undertaker obviously was bigger, but it should have been bigger. I mean, this was like a regular show, and they did a great number. This week, they had the, um, you know, the college football ranking show. They had uh, college basketball on ESPN. They had NBA on TNT. And so that was the difference. They're down. Um, Raw, the same thing. The Denver Broncos Buffalo Bills game did seventeen million six hundred seventy eight thousand viewers, which is the most in several weeks. And Raw was the lowest in several weeks, one million four hundred sixty seven thousand viewers and no point four four. So, uh, main event held pretty decently, one million three hundred eighty nine thousand, which is higher than the main events the last few weeks have done. Uh, the tag team title match with Finn Balor and Damian Priest against Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso. Now, I guess the big story this week coming up is um, it was two things. This Friday night, uh, Collision goes head to head with SmackDown, and historically, I believe when AEW and WWE have actually had programming on at the same time. Since the formation of AEW, AEW has won 77 times, and 
WWE has won twice. The most recent being a couple, you know, a couple weeks ago. This one will be the third time, and it will be a massacre. There's not even, you know, there's, there's, I mean, it won't even. It, it probably won't do a fourth of what WWE does. And even taking out, even if you take out like the fact that it's on Fox versus TNT, which is a gigantic advantage. The fact is, if it was on FS1 against TNT, SmackDown would still win handily over Collision based on the fact that, you know, just a much, much, much bigger shower these days. So it's going to be a massacre. Everyone knows going in. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.